Bang! Needs knives, I'm Jared, and today we're checking out a couple new giant mouses. Now, I gotta say, I was not expecting, we're gonna check this one out here in one second. I was not expecting to like this one as much as I do. Holy cow, this thing is awesome. It is so, so good. Giant mouse, continue doing work like this, 100%. This is how it is done. This is the Titanium Tribeca, and I gotta say, man, this is, and I, I know I'm in a honeymoon phase, but I can confidently say this is my new favorite giant mouse. The breaking detent and action is so crisp and so clean. This thing is addicting. Just listen to that lockup. We'll get some acoustics so you guys can hear it here in a moment, but man, oh man, this thing, not only does it have a very comfortable flipper tab, the break from the detent is just, it's the crispest I've ever felt on any giant mouse. I've never felt a giant mouse with this, like this type of detent and action. And I know, like I said, kind of the same thing about the Corta, the Sonoma and the, the Jutland, those three knives just have like such a clean breaking detent as well that, that I even said like at the time, like this feels like Riet. This, this is, this is something else. And it's just, it's so good. And I heard other channels, like other people kind of talking about it, saying, you know, how good the action was, but I was not, I was not expecting it to be this crisp, this clean. We have a magnet cut blade with a beautiful set and finish, um, con or crown spines. So you got that beautiful crown spine that the giant mouse is known for titanium scales, a steel liner that's in set so it's screwed into to the lock bar side and it's inset. So really well done. Um, then we have a brass backspacer with, uh, with Giant Mouse's well-known jimping, a uh, deep carry wire clip that is reversible and a full four finger grip. Even if you choke back, you can get a tight four finger grip. You know, you're right there, you're kind of snug, but you have all that room to choke up because of the finger choil. So beautiful sharp and and plunge grind. It's gonna sharpen up really, really good. It's not the thinnest geometry, but it's also not thick. Like, you know, it's gonna cut really, really good. Um, it's got almost a tip centered with the pivot, just a little bit higher. So it's gonna be good at utility cuts. It's gonna cut really good. But this flipper tab, it's angled and looking at it, I would never think that this was a good flipper tab. I freaking love this flipper tab. It's so comfortable and it's so effortless. It's like, you can hear it. You know, let's listen to some acoustics. The access to the lock bar is another thing. That is something that Giant Mouse either knocks out of the park or gets completely wrong. And on this one, they knocked it out of the park. Fantastic access to the lock bar. It's very well jimped. It's nice and comfortable. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to make it seem like it's something it's not, but this, this one's really awesome. This is absolutely my favorite giant mouse to date right now and i know i'm in the honeymoon phase and people would argue you know like oh you said that about you know the jutland but i i can confidently say th this is absolutely my new favorite giant mouse and people you know there's been a few really good drops lately and i want to bring this up because i did get a couple comments and i know like sometimes when, when knives are dropping, you know, we get excited, I get excited about them, you know, and I'm raving about them, but that's just because they are that good. They're that awesome. If there was something wrong or if they were bad, I would say that. But when you have like five knives back to back that are really, really good, it's hard not to get excited about all of them. You know, some people make, make it seem like, like, oh, it's just a sales pitch or something. Like it has nothing to do with that. I think I've been very 
honest about all my reviews and or first impressions or anything like that. And, um, you know, and, and I have plenty, so many videos of me, you know, even even if you look at this, the uh, the giant mouse, um, the mini Ace Grand, I basically dogged that thing. I dragged it, and, and not that it was a bad knife. I love the knife. I want to be clear. I love that knife, but the lock bar access was horrid, horrid. And the problem with that is that the large one, right, the large Ace Grand had horrible lock bar access too. You had people modifying it, lots of people. Lots of people bought it and modified. I personally did. I modified mine, I had to. I couldn't stand it. I love the, it sucks when you love a knife so much, like everything about it, but there's that one thing, that one thing that just gets you. And that's the way that was. And it was so hard for me to look past. So I had to bring it up because it was literally frustrating me, you know, just, just checking it out. This, I don't have any of that. The only negative I could come up with this is T6s. Why? Just use T8s, damn it. Just use T8s. Other than that, this thing is an absolute masterpiece. I freaking love this thing. Like a lot, like a lot. Now, let's check out this next knife. This next knife is something new. Um, so, if you don't know, Giant Mouse is doing chef knives now. So, this is actually pretty awesome. Um, very, very thin geometry. These are made in Italy, and there is different um, sizes and stuff. So they, they have, I'll show them up on the screen. There's different ones. Um, this one's the big chef knife. I forget what it's called. They call it something. But it is in nitro B steel, not V, nitro B steel. We'll talk about that in a second. My car to scales, beautiful satin finish, gorgeous satin finish, and it has very thin geometry. This is how a chef knife is supposed to be. You know, and after I got that custom chef knife from Chef Kalari from, uh, from Super Steel Steve, you know, it really showed me what a chef knife is supposed to be like. Um, that thing is just on another level. And, um, and it's one of my most prized possessions, you know, as far as, as knives go. This is, <clears throat> this is similar to that with the geometry it is mega mega thin they did a really really good job with that the tip is very very thin so this thing is going to be very precision oriented um this is definitely i'm not saying you can't be tough on it because it is a tough steel let's talk about that nitro b steel i don't know much about nitro b i reached out to steve actually um super steel steve to see what he knew about it and you know it's a super tough steel it's not going to be a high edge retention steel at all uh, but he said it, it's kind of like a super stainless 5160, but it's also, you know, it's similar to like a surgical stainless kind of. Um, so it's going to be a super tough stainless steel that doesn't hold an edge for very long, you know, but I, I'll say this with the geometry this thing has, um, the geometry is what's going to be doing the cutting. And with with food and with chef knives, depending on what you're using it for, like, if you're using it appropriately, it's not a work knife, right? You're not dragging it across aluminum or concrete or anything like that. And hopefully you're not using it on ceramic. Let's, let's stop doing that if you are. Make sure you're using a wood or a plastic, you know, cutting board. And the edge should, you know, should hold on pretty good. The one thing you're going to have with this is it'll be very easy to sharpen. Very easy to sharpen. Very easy to strop back. It should be pretty responsive to that. It should be... Uh, it shouldn't chip. It really shouldn't be a type of steel that, that micro chips or anything like that, considering all the toughness. Um, but like I said, the, the edge might wear down a little bit faster than maybe some of your other steels. Um, but it'll be very responsive to stropping. So it'll be easy to strop, easy to hone back, easy to sharpen back up. And the geometry is what's going to keep this thing going because it is so thin. Even if it was dull, it's going to cut. Uh, and Speaking about Chef, um, Chef Kalari or Super Still Steve, he has videos of his custom knives and he shows knives that he didn't even put an edge on yet. N there's not even an edge on it. And you see him chopping vegetables and you would think, you would think that there was an edge on it, but it's just that geometry cuts, right? So, and this thing is very similar to that as far as geometry goes. So this is, this is pretty cool. 
Um, I, I, I like it quite a bit, like a lot, like a lot. The, the handle is very comfortable. Um, it is my Carta. So, you know, being my Carta, it should, uh, you know, it's kind of tacky. So, you know, it's not going to slip out of your hand. You're going to be able to, to cut with it, even in wet conditions very well. Um, yeah, I'm actually excited about sharpening it and trying out this Nitro B steel. I, I don't, you know, I just don't know enough about it to really speak from it, speak about it from like, you know, a position of not a position of use, you know, and me being knowledgeable about it. Um, but Hey, I, I'm excited about it. And these are, like I said, these are made in Italy. So, you know, if, you know, that means something to you, uh, to, you know, maybe you're Italian or family's Italian or anything like that, or maybe you just like Italian stuff, you know, it's an Italian made chef knife and they have a bunch of other ones as well. So I'll have everything linked down in the description for you guys to check out. Let's go back to the Tribeca for one second because there was a few things I haven't talked about that I need to speak about um, in this video. I said we talk about the steel. Um, it's made in Maniago, Italy, so it is an Italian made knife. The steel liner is 420 steel, which is a super tough, super corrosion resistant steel. So I'm happy to see that. Um, and the blade is magna cut steel now i believe giant mouse is running their magna cut at 61 62 which no that's not optimal for magna cut optimal would be 63 64. It doesn't mean it's bad though. I'm gonna be clear. It doesn't mean it's bad. I've tested a lot of Magna Cut steel, and a lot of 61, 62, and a lot of 63, 64. Yes, 63, 64 holds a better edge. 61, 62 is still gonna be extremely tough. Very, very tough. Toughness off the charts. The corrosion resistance is off the charts. And then its edge retention is gonna be good. It's gonna have great edge retention. Now, at 63, 64, yes, it will outcut this, you know, or it'll outcut a magnet cut at 61, 62, because it just, you know, it's harder. So it holds a better edge for longer. Now, like I said, that doesn't mean this is going to not hold an edge. It just means the magnet cut at 63, 64 is going to hold a better edge for longer. There's also other little qualities like the way it sharpens up, the way it deepers, all that stuff. Um, I've never really had a significant issues issue with any of the steels at 61, 62. Uh, it seemed like when it was like 60, 60, 60 and below, that's where I had like some pretty serious issues. I'm um, not like serious issues, but there, you know, it just like with deburring and, it, you know, it not holding an edge and things like that. Um, but between 61 and 62, a lot of the tests I did, you know, they were still pretty good. The difference between the one test that I did, uh, between six, between 62, between 61, 62 steel and 63 and 64 steel, it was like, it was nearly near a hundred feet uh, of cardboard. I think something like that. Um, it was right around there, give or take. So, you know, it, it's, it did outcut it quite a bit, but the, the 61, 62 still held an edge for a very long time. Like it still had incredible edge retention. So it's still, you know, at the time I remember thinking, you know, like, wow, this thing did pretty good, you know? So, um, you know, I just want to make that clear because I know a lot, you know, a lot of people hear me bitching about steels and HRCs and stuff. And sometimes it can kind of get lost in the sauce, you know, exactly what the issue is. And I think some people think like, oh, 61, 62 is just absolute garbage. That's not, that's not the case. It's not garbage. Like it'll hold an edge like crazy still, just not as long as 63, 64. And that goes for the majority of steels, right? There's going to be an optimal HRC where it's going to have the most amount of edge retention without sacrificing the most amount of toughness. It's going to be in that happy medium. Now, some steels, they want to keep with the highest amount of toughness with the most amount of edge retention. And then some steels are willing to sacrifice a little bit of toughness for a lot more edge retention, you know? So, and that's usually what we want with folding pocket knives because the toughness, while we care about it, it's not the top of the list, right? It's like second on the list. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm super happy with this knife though. I think this thing is freaking awesome. Like freaking awesome. I love it. Uh, <laughs> it is pricey though. 285, I think it is. Yeah, 285 bucks. It's made in Italy. I'm not too mad at that. It's made in Italy with premium parts. And if it wasn't done as good as this, I might I might complain. But because it's done so good and that that 
the freaking action is so satisfying. I, you know, I get, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not mad at it at all. So there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.